Welcome everybody. I am Gabriela Di Laccio. I am uh, the founder and curator of the project Donne Women in Music. I'm so happy to be able to chat today with Vic Bain. Uh, you are really going to be amazed with all the, the things she's going to share with us. I, I will learn a lot more about uh, her report and her initiatives and all her views. Uh, but uh, without any further ado, I want to introduce you to Vic Bain. Uh, so she has a very long biography. I have to read. <laughs> so Vic, uh, hi Vic. Hi, uh, everyone. Vic has worked in, in so many sectors of music for 25 years. Uh, for six years, she was the CEO of the British Academy of Songwriters, Composers and Authors, now known as the Ivers Academy. Uh, she is now a full-time campaigner for diversity and inclusion in the music industry. Vic is also the author of an influential report influential report called Counting the Music Industry, shining a light on how few women are supported in professional music careers. She's also the curator of the F-List directory of female musicians and a PhD researcher at Primary University looking at women's careers uh, in the music industry. For her campaigning work, Vic has in, was enrolled into the Music Week Women in Music Awards Role of Honor 2017 and BBC Radio 4 Women's Hour Music Industry Power List 2018, as well as being a Henley Business School MBA graduate. I told you it was long. Vic is also a director of the, currently a director of the board of the Incorporated Society of Musicians, Parents and Carers in Performing Arts, PIPA, PIPA. Yeah, right. And also a music tech startup called Delic. Welcome, Vic. <laughs> uh, I think we will start talking about this amazing report that uh, came last year. And I'm just going to give you the highlight, right? So last October, uh, the in-depth study Counting the Music Industry was published, presenting some staggering facts. And that was Vic's extensive report on the music industry and gender inequality. According to the report, only 14.18% of the 12,000 writers represented by UK publishers are women, while female artists make up 19.69% of the rosters of acts signed to labels. So, Vic, tell us more. And I have a... I have a bit more to show you guys here as well. Well, I think it, it's probably useful to know why why I did this gender audit any anyway. You, you know, I think um, you sort of describing your own um, personal ex personal experience of um, maybe performing in concerts and attending concerts and not really not really seeing what's what's missing, not really seeing what's there right in front of our eyes. And it took me a, a good while as as well. I mean, I kind of knew it was it was male male. You know, the industry was male dominated. But every time I, I sort of in, inquired to that around around me, people would deny that that was a, there was a problem. Um, uh, it really came to a head when uh, when I became CEO of of Basca, and I was um, much more aware of who was winning British Composer Awards, which Basca uh, owned and ran, and who was who was winning Ivan Novello Awards, which Basca also owned, owned and ran. And I did some um, analysis of 60, over 60 years worth of data of, of the Ivers, because um, it had been going since 1955. And I, and I realized only 6% of the of the awards given out to writers, only six percent of them were women. In, six and that, in over sixty years, so that had only gone up to ten percent since twenty ten. So it's still, you know, I mean, it started off um, in the fifties and sixties. It was less than one percent. So it has gone up, but it's very, it's it's very slow, very slow movement. And uh, with the British Composer Awards, there was. Um, 
there was one year where there were there were no women winning any any of the awards and 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 uh, and very few had even been nominated so you know i really uh, as a as as someone who cares very much about um, about women in music i you know had lots of conversations about why why this was and i realized it was there was a pipeline for awards so this pipeline happens with the you know the the, the, you know the Graphone Awards with the with the Brits with the uh, with the with the Ivers all of these music awards. The pipeline is who is entered by the music publishing companies or the record labels. Of course. So you, you, you know you have to sort of be uh, in it in these awards to win, to win it. Yeah. So then I so then I thought well who who are they who are they entering who are the record labels and the publishing companies entering. And realised that the you know the statistics for for um, works being entered by women was very very low, so that made me think well who was who was on their rosters who are they signing, so I had started the audit while I was still at Basca but it is a very time consuming piece of work and I didn't I didn't get it didn't get it done so when I stepped down about a year and a half ago um, I thought well uh, I, you know I've got some time on my hands. And, uh, and I'm going to get this count done. So I looked at 30,000 profiles, <laughs> which wow. was a lot of a lot of counting. So I've you know got um, <laughs> very very meticulous records of it was over 300 labels and um, publishers I looked at and, and 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 extracted the information from from all of their websites, all of the names yeah. of their of their artists of their of their writers and any bands as well i had to sort of look at the look at the breakdown of the of the bands and i don't think i was too surprised by the low the low number of writers that i found because um i you know i've worked with songwriters and composers for 15 years now um you know i was i was aware that it was very male dominated so 40 sort of an average 14 percent of of writers signed to those rosters that sort of you know that sort of felt about about right i mean it's low and it's not great but uh it didn't surprise me what did surprise me was the low numbers of musicians signed you know the performing musicians signed signed to the record labels that um that statistic and, really and did my research uh, it goes from pop to classical isn't it yeah, I mean, I looked at um, eight broad genres, and um, in, in in fact, you know, I mean, lots of lots of people have, uh, you know, get very get very obsessed by genres. Why haven't you got this genre and, and so on? But you know, I thought eight genres is enough to to sort of cover the yeah. you know the, the 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 full the full range. So I looked at classical, folk, pop, indie, jazz, um, electronic. Mm -hmm. heavy metal and drum and bass and grime mm -hmm. um, and so the overall statistic is just under 20 percent women are signed to signed to rosters but um you know the best the best um genre to be a female musician in is classical and that's just over 30 percent of the of the act signed signed to the labels now this is i looked at groups up up until um numbers of about 20 people i didn't look at the big choirs or the you know the big orchestras because i thought that's another um that's another research project to look at to look at those so i wanted to you know put a cap on the um on, so so it covers you know small um uh, you know quartets and small and very small choirs and and so on so yeah just over 30 percent it's the best the best genre to be one but still 30 percent is not 50 percent no but it's, it's quite uh, now i'm going to talk about the unconscious bias we have because for me this was a surprise when you said uh that classical music is was is was the best in in the in the groups that you were uh, researching because i always thought oh of course pop music uh, the women are doing so great because we see a few of them doing great and in our you know we don't question we just think oh of course so we see a few here a few there and then they're so great and they're so big and so talented i always thought they're fine Cla classical music is the problem as well because they're you know of course we know jazz is a uh, uh, those are the, the 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 genres i am more attached to like classical contemporary 
jazz, uh, pop. Um, so I would I, I don't know much about um, heavy metal and things like that. Uh, but I always thought uh, no classical music is the is the worst. So uh, for me that was a surprise. Uh, mm. I was I was surprised to see how 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 low that was. I mean, pop the pop music um, labels I looked at. There were seventy five of those, and eighteen percent of the artists signed to pop music labels are are female. Uh, and I think I think some of it is because um, it, it, women women are are, are very much um, sort of pushed pushed into or maybe encouraged to only be singers. Or if they, you know, if they can play a musical instrument, they, um, you know, they're not necessarily being signed signed to, to, to labels, or they're not necessarily playing in um, in bands. Mm -hmm. So there's um, there's a sort of a disc discrepancy in the in in my actual report. I um, I, I, I sort of outline the difference between the solo artists and those who play in bands, and women are more likely to. Um, to be solo artists than they than they are to 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 play in bands, which are which are still very very male male dominated. Yeah, I was trying to put some of the slides, but I don't know if people can see it right. Uh, I will keep showing them just for um, there's a lot of information you need to go and uh, actually on your website uh, and download the full report because it's 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 extremely. Uh, revealing and i think one one thing i think when i started the the label drama musica and sorry back to uh and the project when i realized exactly that that oh cd awards and uh people need to record first right you need to be a recording artist to be part of so many things and it's the same with uh, being your work published so i'll go the, the the publishing site i don't know much about it do you can you tell us a bit more about that why is that important and how can people well it's still you know it's still i think um uh, you know and 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 in the report as well i sort of talk about these these um these 12 barriers which um doesn't mean to say that there aren't any more any more barriers but these were just um uh, 12 12 i uh, i focused on and there's still very much this this stereotype of the um if the creative male genius, the male maestro, if you think of a composer, you think of somebody from, from you know maybe the, the 18th or 19th centuries who is who is a man, and in you know in fact we've got a we've got a thousand years of history where where women were not allowed to compose, yeah. they they just weren't they were forbidden, um, or or if they if they did and of course and you you and I know that hundreds and thousands of um of women did compose but they did secretly they did yeah. they, they they were publishing uh music under their husband's names or their brother's names uh you know they had to be protected by a male f family member they were they were invariably w wealthy um uh, you know so women were encouraged to to play music in in what's called the private sphere of the of the, of the home but they were certainly not allowed to perform or create music outside of the home and we think we think we've moved on from that but we have you know we still have those uh, those stereotypes and attitudes i think deeply embedded in uh, in our society and in many countries around the world today we you know we have a situation where women are still not allowed to perform outside of the home so it's still you know they still have that that system that we had until until not very long ago as well so I think that's that's what we're we're dealing with, and um, also when I looked at educational data um, of of degree students who who was studying music and what numbers, what was the gender balance there? Uh, over overall, it's sort of a near it's it's about forty four percent female studying all all music subjects, but still in the technology based. Mm -hmm. um, degree programs you know, such as engineering and audio, audio production it, it is still very male dominated so there's a there's a problem there and those i i think those attitudes are still um uh, prevalent in in composing and songwriting as well so you know i know i know that there are um there are many more women out there who are composing 
that are yeah. being designed. Yeah. So there's I know. yeah, there's definitely there's definitely bar barriers. I'm looking yes, looking at the degree the degree students study in compositions about. Um, uh, off the top of my head, and I've got some all of the all of the figures in the report. It's a post grad level. Those studying composition, a third are female, a third are female. So you know, at at that level, you know that those composers are talented. They're they're, they're excellent. Um, you know, they're obviously wanting to establish themselves as professional composers, but they are still not being signed to publishing companies and anywhere near the same levels of uh, um, as men. Uh, you know, and that is a real, a real problem because getting signed to a publishing company or a record label, um, it, it, you know, it does no matter what you think, what you think of them morally, it we, you know, it allows you, it gives you that financial investment to to further and develop your career and women are not being given um the same opportunities that that men are okay the, uh, so i i get asked this a lot and i find quite sweet that people will know would think i know the answer uh but um what do you think um uh, is the for uh, i i can't remember who said this to me uh, i think it was nicola lefano who said to me, uh, I, do, I never wanted to believe that uh, patriarchism or, or prejudice was the main reason because I really, I, I think I was quite naive or, uh, at the beginning. Uh, but I, what I'm been finding out is like, you don't need a lot of prejudiced people, but you need only a few in certain positions to really stop things happening in terms of getting a, a concert program or a, a that will include more a, a kind of different type of music like uh, that people are not uh, used to uh, or in radio stations as well uh, kind of using the same format uh, and not challenging uh, the audiences uh, and but in your opinion what is the main reason I know it's not one reason but what is the main re thing we should fight right now good luck the main what well, the main reason for women not being not being signed to to, to record labels and well I you know personally yeah. I think it's because we recruit in our own image, uh, you know and people and people don't realise that that's that that's what they 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 are doing, and uh, and people go for the the safe the safe option. So I think a lot of the um, the label the label owners and the um, creative talent scout, scouts out there. Well, it's, it's a very male-dominated sector, and so I, you know, I think that they're they're much they're much more um, receptive to, to 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 music that is being created and performed by by men, just because that's that's who who they are. So mm -hmm. they feel you know they feel that's familiar to them. Mm -hmm. So I think putting more women into the into those roles will 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 really start to enact changes. More you know more women running labels, more women in charge of um, A, A and R departments. Um, so I think you know we can sort of start start to make some changes there. But also I don't think people realise the the statistics on their own rosters. Yeah. So you know uh, it's something I hear a lot is well. Um, uh, in response to in response to my research, well, I just don't recognise those those statistics, you know, because I'm I'm gender blind, I'm gender neutral, and it's all about talent. Um, until you know, until you point out that on their roster, it's you know, there's only fifteen percent percent women, and uh, you know, maybe maybe they're not as gender gender blind or neutral as they um, as they as they perhaps think yeah. think they are. So yeah, so uh, you know, and you get to the oh, it's not about gender; it's about talent. That you go, mm, yeah, yeah. But so I mean, looking, you know, looking at it was very important for me to look at the educational pipe pipeline, um, and to and to see that over the past five years, well, in music performance degrees, it's fifty fifty 
50% female, 50% 50, 50 male. And, um, and yet women are, you know, are not able to, to start their performance careers or sustain their performance careers in anywhere near the same, the same numbers as, as men. So, you know, it's, um, and so I don't, I don't think it's about talent. Presumably the women who are graduating from these degrees are every bit as talented as their male counterparts. I'm showing a message from Lucy, which I thought was mm. very interesting. I didn't yeah. know. Uh, yeah, home of Philly. Yeah, home of yeah. Philly. It's called. You know, when we see we see this in um, in the bands, the bands that that um, that the men the men are making. So there's a real differential. Um, if you if you, if you if you look at my my figures. Um, the the worst, the most extreme example of this is in the jazz genre, where 25% of of the signed musicians are, are the solo artists are female, but it's something like only seven percent of those in bands and jazz bands are are female. Mm -hmm. So there's a real um, you know very strong culture there of men only wanting to play with other with other men and not and not letting the women in at all. Which say that's a you know that's an extreme example, but that's that's pretty that's pretty much mirrored um, in pop and and in classical as well. Yeah, it's it's almost unbelievable to think that. No, you you I, I as a singer, I think uh, we always uh, feel like things are more equal for us as a classical singer. I mean, I mean, uh, because if you are hired for an oratorio, you always have four four voices. In operas, you have female parts, male parts. So. Um, for me, it was um, when you start thinking of, but I'm thinking more of classical music. That's why your your comments are so shocking for me, uh, even as performers, because I know how much female uh, instrumentalists uh, suffer uh, the same thing. Uh, conductors, they they are in the same uh, mm -hmm. have the same challenges. And again, we see a few up there, but if you think of the um, amount of talent that is getting disencouraged, I think, on the yep. through, while they start, they might start and just feel like, no, uh, so I'm not going well, to survive on this. A good, a good, a good fr fr friend of mine who's, a, well, she's a very um, well-regarded, powerful e executive in the in the music industry um, uh, from a classical music background. She she told me that when she was younger, she'd really wanted to be a conductor. And uh, I think she'd been on some sort of um, training training week, and she was the only woman. And the and the and the man who was um, training them had pointed out to her that physically she wasn't able to conduct because these would get in the way. What? So, so thus thus ended thus ended her conducting career. So I think. Um, you know, I mean, some of it's just pure, pure, pure sexism, isn't it? You know, um, there's, a, there's unfortunately there's a, there's a lot of that about. I mean, when I when I was when I was sort of taking around the initial um, uh, results, first, you know, when I was doing when I was doing my research last year, and I looked I looked at the publishing companies and I looked at the labels first of all, and I was sort of having prelim preliminary meetings with various um, very high level, you know, CEO level. Exec executives in the music industry at labels and publishing companies and the feedback that came back to me was um, a mixture of well men are better at music than women and <laughs> and there were more men studying music than 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 women which is what set me off on looking and on, on looking at the educational um, pipeline data data as well so you know if those um, if those attitudes are, are reflective, and I suspect they are, of, of CEOs and high-level executives in the music industry, in publishing companies and labels, then um, you know, unf unfortunately, I think we've got um, we've still got our work cut out. Hmm. So uh, tell us about uh, the F list then, because I think the F list yeah. is your way of contributing. Doing something. Yeah. <laughs> Doing, doing something yeah. that, uh, I've, I've sort of been I've been taking um, my counting the music industry research um, around to various universities and um, and charities and things and things like that but uh, you know it's pretty um, it can be very sobering if not depressing 
um, uh, reading. So you know, I always I always try to 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 end my presentations with well, what can we what can we be doing about this? So yes, the F list is 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 um, is something that I hope which will help. Um, because of all of all of the the data gathering I did last year, I have, as I said, you know, I've got a, a record of the profiles of thirty thousand mus musicians, thousands of whom are, are women, and. In January this this year, I saw on Twitter again going around on social media all of the um, the, the sort of you know the, the previews of the lineups for the music festivals that had been booked for the for, for the summer. I mean, goodness, how things how things have changed. But um, there were very you know there were very various festival lineups which were being announced, and um, invariably it was the um, it was the same. Um, it was the it was the same thing, you know. Some of the some of those the bigger ones, the festivals, especially the you know the heavier, more rock rock music based. I looked at the lineup of Leeds and Reading, and it was only thirteen percent of the musicians on stage were women. Thirteen percent in twenty twenty, you know, my goodness. And yet, when you when you read the um, the responses from a lot of the festival promoters, they say, well. Um, there just aren't enough women uh, musicians to contact. We've asked them all, you know. They, <laughs> you know, where, where are they? <laughs> and you know, and then and lots of people very helpful on Twitter go, well, I know a woman, you know, and they and then they a woman, um, uh, you know, or, or or whatever, you know, just very just very small numbers. And I just thought, well, I've got I've got thousands listed in my research. What if I extracted all of the women, and um, and just put that up as a as a as a big list? So it took it took me a couple of weeks, um, you know, to get to get all of the all of the women, or the bands which had women in them, yeah, in different in different genres. And so halfway through February, I I, I made that live onto a um, a Google a Google spreadsheet. The sun's come out <laughs> and to a bit, and to a big google Google spreadsheet and um yeah it went it went viral so there's three and a half thousand individual musicians and um uh, nearly two and a half thousand bands or groups with women in them and you can search by genre um there's I, I've sort of mainly most of most of those women are are listed under their record labels. But there's about 500 self-releasing uh, musicians as well. So yeah, it's it, publish, publishers and writers, record labels and their artists. So any anyone who's organising an event, no matter what genre, they can they can go onto this list and maybe you know discover artists they've never heard of. Um, you know, these and most of them are signed. So there's that sort of a quality marker there, and. Um, yeah, it just it just went crazy. I mean, I did have um, there was a BBC news story went went out about it at the start of March, and in one week I had four festivals contact me wanting wanting me to give them help and advice on booking booking more women on their festival stages. Oh, so that's yeah, great. yeah, oh, that's I was like, awesome. yes, oh, you know, yeah. that's, that's you know, for, for me, I just thought if. You know, if one woman gets booked out of this initiative, yeah. who, gets, who gets work? Um, so I'm really, ex I'm really excited about about that. And I know it's, you know, it's such a horrific situation this summer that we're not going to have any any festivals. But let's just pray for next for next summer, and pray also that um, the gender balance on these festival stages is going is going to be better than 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 it has been up to this point so that's my that's my mission with the, with the F list yeah but um, as you were telling us you are republishing it a, a bigger version now yeah I'm well I'm rebuilding it in 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 WordPress so it's going to be in a, in a, in a beautiful looking um, uh, website because at the minute it's just on a Google sheet you know yeah. which is very um, I've, been, I've, been, I've been there. I've, I checked. Yeah, you know, it's very, it's very, um, you know, it's functional. I mean, you can find, you can find everyone. Um, you can do, as I say, you can do 
searches by genre and, uh, and so on, but it's still, it's quite limited. So at the, uh, at the minute, I'm, um, yeah, I'm at the start of a, of a, a, a WordPress rebuild, but which hopefully, you... hopefully will be ready in July. Oh, great. Do you find that, because I find this with, uh, at, the, at the website Donne, we have the big list. I call it the big list because for me, when I started typing them there, it was so big and was like thousands of women, you know, kind yeah. of, and I really wanted to make a point of typing myself. So I would get to find out a bit more about all of them. And yeah. now we have a, a daily blog since last January and every day of the year, there are two new composers, right? Yeah. That, um, we are featuring there. We continue to do interviews. Um, I will give all the details at the end for people to whoever is not in contact uh, with, with us yet to submit their, their details as composers, living composers. Do you find, and, and I, I've, I, I got the same thing when I published the, the researches on the orchestra programming uh, two years ago, which was all over the place, the Guardian, and then you go BBC interview, la, 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 la. And then that was it. Then, and then six months pass, passes and I, I, I meet again and somebody who will say to me, oh, no, but women composers, they only wrote choir music, right? Only religious stuff. No. And you feel like, what's going on? I mean, and then you give a people like, and there are other projects. There are so many projects. Uh, I'm not going to say many uh, because I'm going to miss lots and, and I don't want to be uh, unfair to people, but there is a one page on Donna's uh, website called Amplify, and you find like, I don't know, more than 50 there, I think, uh, of people promoting women in music, not only women, but, you know, diversity uh, and all, and, and you find databases, and then people ask me, oh, no, but the music is very hard to get. No. Oh, no, but the, you, you don't find music. No. Yes. So, yeah. how do we manage to cross that barrier? Because you're going to publish this amazing republish uh, in a yeah. rebranded version and the big list is there all these other projects are there people don't really have excuses and things are so slow i know there is progress i really don't want to be negative i know there uh, there is some progress uh, but i do find it so slow i find it goes like too slow for 2020 I think, uh, I think it's yeah it's so important to keep looking at the statistics you know because people you know people have a tendency to to say oh well everything's fixed now yeah we've got we've got women in music we've do, we've done that um again that was another response that came back to me when i was showing my preliminary uh research results and um and and a ceo said said to me but my my board thought we you know we did diversity last year so you know so that's that tick tick box done and so i think uh you know it was very it made for very uncomfortable reading for for a lot of people when i published my my research to show that no we are very very long way away from from uh equality and so you know we better we better keep keep on at this so i you know i was i i was removed from a lot of christmas card lists i <laughs> think you know, I, I, I'm, I really, I really made myself quite unpopular because people don't, you know, don't like. So, I just think it's so important uh, to keep looking at at the statistics and all of the, all of these labels and publishing companies need to need to be looking at this, not just their staff rosters, which is which are slightly better, but their but their creative rosters, and then you know, and be open and transparent about that, and 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 want to take some positive actions about that. And it's not, you know, I mean, you you know, it's not just it's not just last year's pro project; it's this year's as well, and it's next year's too. Yeah. So I think, um, uh, you know, I mean, there's some fantastic comments. I'm just reading. Um, yeah, uh, I know. I can read it. Yeah, we'll some really amazing guys in, in a minute because they're very interesting. Uh, and uh, remember, we all can stay here forever. Uh, there is one question I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to ask the, the people watching as well, because some some women, uh, more specifically composers, um, it might be uh, in women in music as well. Uh, some don't really like the idea of being boxed in this female composers or be part of something because it feels like they are not equal to the others. And I find very, I really respect, but I, I'm quite um, 
a defender of the we need to promote this because yeah. if there was equality uh then there wouldn't be a reason for these projects to exist right so if everything right. was fair yeah uh, so uh for for those who don't think that or think oh no i don't want to be seen as a quota i really hope people can overcome that because it's not a quota is a it's we need to give like promotion to more talent so they can kind of get the visibility they deserve that's how i how i feel but do you find uh, some women that come to you and will come and think something like that yes uh, all the time i mean if you if you're a composer or a, or a you know a musician um you don't want to be representative of your of your sex you don't you want to be you want to be valued for your for your talent and your creativity i totally get that but there's something called um tokenism which has been which has been studied um in in organizations for for a long for a long time if if you are less than 15 percent of a group you you are the minority in the reckon 15 15 percent is 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 about the level you are a minority and you become a token so whether you like it or not you will become representative of that you know of that minority group whether that is a disability or it's your it's your race or it's it's your it's your sex so you know i'm i i, I do feel i understand women's frustration at, at being labeled the fe the female composer um but um it's you know it's yes it's just it's one of it's one of those things that happens if you're if you're in, in in a minority so whether you like it or not i'm afraid it's you know that's that's just the way it's going to be until until things are things are more equal i'm saying hi to rob rob, hi, uh, rob. <laughs> uh, many of you must know is the uh, founder and curator and director correct me rob of the institute for composer diversity so of course his battle is even more broad than only women but yeah. uh he, he he rob come on rob you're the only man on this list i think <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you for being here yeah. um uh we're gonna open for questions in a minute uh but i will finish with this question uh which is for me it's for you uh which is really much more like a reflection of what else can we do as artists as uh, administrators of a small group and i think many people feel like um oh i'm so small my group is so small nobody is watching us uh, we can't really change anything and uh, i can say this from my own experience that even adding one piece in one concert it really uh, you you make one person curious is so amazing to see and uh you know people are just audiences i really find this i don't know why big orchestras or radio stations don't believe in that or uh, audiences are more open than you think to new things if if the music is presented with passion and 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 with belief behind it and it you know we can educate an audience a little bit before or it's amazing how open audiences are the public really uh, we're not we didn't we didn't reach a memory full type of talent in music that we can't learn new stuff as mm. audiences as a public so i really uh, think as artists if you are an artist really uh visit vic's list my list the big list rob's list uh we're gonna put on the comments uh, all the details um because it's a world of repertoire to be um, explored and this is uh, what I think as an artist, but what else can we do, Vic, as women and people anyway? Well, this is the <laughs> one thing, you know, thank mm -hmm. you so much because I think you being here is already amazing and uh, we can keep this video on for more people to share and watch. I think, um, well, there's so much that can be done, um, you, you know, right from a sort of a governmental policy, policy level, down to any any of us who own and run <laughs> I mark, <laughs> any of us who own and run companies in the in the music industry uh, uh, as i say you know every every music company needs needs to do an audit and then look at how they can positively improve their their statistics um 
everybody everybody can 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 um do what i call um supporting one female positive initiative per year every single individual or every single company if we all did one thing which could be booking booking a woman em employing a woman commissioning a woman do you know give, donating some 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 money to a to a fund that supports women in music if every single person in the music industry did did one one thing towards towards gender equality then we could be in a transformational place i think by you know very 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 quickly and what you know what can we do do ourselves well we can we can keep informing ourselves we can we can network and support each other as as well, and uh, and most importantly, I think we've got to be helping the next the next generation, the 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 young women who are just coming out of university right right now. You know, we really need to be keeping a very close eye on them so that we don't watch them dis disappear at the same the same wow. level that has been over the past few years. Yeah. Well, shall we open to some questions? Because we have yeah. 15 minutes, and uh, for uh, okay, I'm gonna. So uh, the the first one with a question mark is Olivia's. Okay, there we go. Oh, hold on. Ooh, come on! There must be another man to to kind of join. Us. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I don't know. I don't know. I, th I think I think I think it's very nice, Olivia, that women support women, and I'm taking like there are lots of women here as a positive thing, uh, uh, with welcoming all, all all the guys behind us as well. There are lots of uh, uh, men supporting men, uh, male artists. Uh, I have lots of colleagues who who play. Um, if they don't, I really nag them. <laughs> anyway and i think it's our job to to nag people and then to really ask the difficult questions and keep asking uh them so we're going to take rob and mark here as a positive thing yeah I think. <laughs> <laughs> but but it is it is true i think we 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 um we will find less men i think at the beginning do you find that but i think there's there are lots the the, the he for she's are there uh, I don't definitely, find... definitely. You know, and uh, you know, I've been I've been helped in in my career more more by men than I have by by women. I mean, that's possibly because there's been more more men around. But uh, yeah, we've got to we've got to find find al allies. And mm -hmm. yeah, we can't we cannot change this on our uh, on our own. We need we need we need the good guys there as well. That's a question from Lucy. Yeah. Yes, classical composers. Yes um so i've got i've got a, a a sheet um which lists publishing companies so i think there's over 100 publishing companies there and all of the all of the um all of the living composers or or, or the um the works which are, are still in copyright uh, I didn't. I didn't. This was not a, a, a look at the um, uh, past centuries. It was. It was very much focused on 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 current writers. But yes, classical composers are there. Yes. Okay. Um, keep questions coming, or we'll keep talking here forever, people. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Did we? Did we? Did we miss any going? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna scroll up. I mean, there are lots of. Uh, interesting comments i'm gonna yeah. post lucy's uh again because she wrote something about her own story um yeah but, in the 19, yes in the 1980s it, looked, still, it, looked like it, gonna change. it continues saying yeah he's still with us 40 years um 40 years on i've uh while the the stories are the more questions are coming it's it's quite um interesting to see that you think it wouldn't happen to you but it uh, it happened to me twice uh, i've been trying to get um venues for for donors initiatives and it's really interesting to see you have a couple of places that they don't want it they really don't want to uh, to to focus things on female composers for example that, that's the more the our project uh and that really surprises me it's, it shocks me almost uh, that it, it could still happen. Yeah, I think you know. I think I think pretty pretty much the um, 
the 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 sexism nowadays is quite covert you know i think in the 70s and the 80s it which it was much it was much more um well i mean it wasn't it wasn't even illegal um uh have you know have harassment in the workplace was it um uh, in the 70s so it, it you know i think people do people are more cautious about their behavior now you know you wouldn't you wouldn't often experience outright sexism it's a little bit more under the surface so when it does happen it uh, and it and it does happen it's still it's quite a shock isn't it because <laughs> yeah. you think because you think you've moved on yeah but i'm sure if people watch this video afterwards and um there will be more women saying it happens much more often than we think i think especially in the i i published something on on donna's uh, last couple of weeks ago which was a, a call for um, a call for um new works commissioned and <laughs> the group said under 40s composers only females and I said to them, I will publish this, but I will put a question live uh, for you to explain. Why do you want under 40s? Why? Why? Because this is not going to look good. I don't agree, but I will publish because it will give work or the opportunity to some women who are under 40. And I did ask them to explain, but they never did. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so, which is a, another type of sexism. Uh, you know, as singers, we go through this, you know, can only audition uh, and women are normally up to 10, 32 and men are always older. You know, they can get yeah. uh, to auditions uh, and we always feel, oh, OK, not well, now. Yeah, that's it. That's uh, my chances then. So it's really uh, strange, but it does happen. OK, sorry. Which statistics surprise yeah. you the most? I think for Vic. Well, for Yes, I mean, for me, for me, the statistic, I mean, not well, not only just that the overall statistic of 20% um, of, 20, 20 of, of uh, recording artists are, are, are female, but looking, looking at the, the genres where the music is, is heavier and more technology based, the electronic um, uh, indie music, heavy, heavy metal, but the drum and bass and grime, which um, they only have five percent of, of of those signed um are, are female so what so what i was seeing there was a real a real intersection i really like to give a shout out to intersectionality so you were talking about age hmm. so you know the the, the the sort of combination of, of 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 your gender and and age and um you know with um with women who are black minority ethnic they also have a have a have a race barrier there's also a class barrier which is very which is very prevalent not only in classical music but in pop music as well yeah. so i think yeah the five the five percent um uh, of those signed to drum and bass and grime line grime labels was a was a was a really um dire dire statistic to sit to see you know those those genres which are, are virtually women women free zones and that's a real that's a real shame you know why do they yeah. I mean, well this it goes back to the the uh, homophily which um lucy lucy uh highlighted uh, earlier the guys just wanting to play with the guys yeah. i found i found 29 labels with no women signed to them at all wow zero zero when you mean like nobody no performers no composers no, no. 20 tw 29 not a single woman in a band not a single and there were dozens more who just had one 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 token woman as well wow. so that was you know a real uh, that was a grim statistic i think can you see the whole message from rob um the rest says hold on yeah yeah, well, I've been I've been taking well until until the the morning of the 16th of March, I was I was halfway through a tour. I had 20 dates set up at universities and music conferences and 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 various other other groups, um, but I was particularly aiming aiming my my presentation at young women and especially at um, at at women studying studying music. Um, and uh, yeah, the, it all it all it all got stopped on the week with the week of the sixteenth of March. So I've done a few uh, I've done a few digital presentations, and and hopefully I'll be able to 
um, start start up the tour again later in the autumn. But we'll we'll have to see where we where we are with um, with with groups gathering and and so on. But um, yeah, I, so I can't I can't see the rest of Rob's um, um, message. But have you worked with music education pre college higher education? Yeah. I'll be curious to see how your work could be integrated into the classroom. Well, actually, my ma my main recommendation for for education and for those for those who are um, teach teaching music and especially young women, a real a real barrier is um, uh, is 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 women studying music. It doesn't matter what genre, but being have, having something which I call technophobia. Hmm. So you know, I mean, this is this is very complex. It's all part of our socialization, you know, in our society from a from a very young age. You know, girls are pushed pushed towards uh, pink glitter and unicorns, uh, you know, which I love, by the way. But it shouldn't just be everything. And boys are pushed into, um, uh, you know, what I call technology competence. Now, I trained as a singer 30, 30, 30 years ago, and um, I didn't, you know, I didn't do a single um, uh, technology uh, lesson the whole time I was studying music. So, you know, when you go out into the real world and you're using recording studios, uh, or, or even if it's a live, live stage setup, you are then putting your career and your and your art, your artistic credentials in the hands of teams of men who who are who are working around you, and uh, and I think that's very disempowering as well. So I really yeah my biggest my biggest um, um, contention at the moment is that even if you are training to be an opera singer, um, it doesn't matter what genre of of music and, and performance. Uh, I would encourage all girls and women who are studying music to get a grasp of te technology you know and whether whether that's uh, you know being being able to um compose their own pieces and put it onto Sibelius or or, or however that man manifests just to be more more confident because then they'll be able to have more control over over their creative careers i was up at the scottish music center in february actually uh, there's an amazing organization called uh, Scottish Women Inventing Music. Uh, so I was up, up there doing, doing an event with, with them and had a, I had an absolutely fantastic time. We'd love to come back. So, um, yeah, yes. I'd, get, I'd go back to Scotland in a heartbeat. <laughs> and then we have a question from Hannah. Yes, I would, I would love to do more, um, more countries. During during my research, um, I mean, I have come up with a list of, um, I think it was something like 400 European labels and um, nearly a thousand American and Canadian la labels. Uh, obviously, I didn't have time to to an analyze them all. It took it took me four months to do to do the audit because it was very very time time consuming process. What I would really like like to do is um, is talk to some tech developers and work and work out a technological way of doing the identification, the gender identification uh, by computer. That would that would be really amazing. And then we could we could set it off looking looking at um, at different countries a lot you know a lot quicker. So I, uh, you know, I have I have been mulling that thought around in my head. So if anyone knows some amazing tech or algorithm developers that we could maybe apply for some uh, research funding for, I, I I I would be all ears because I would I would really like to do to do that. So yeah, we could we could then do we could do um, you know much greater quantities of in, of information of um, uh, looking at these these websites much much quicker. And that would be that would be really interesting. So that's yeah, that's another another project that sort of um, I'm uh, mulling over. It would be amazing if it was available for you in every country. To be I would honest. I would love to see to see that happen in every country. But as I say, it was you know it was so it was it took me four months to um, to look at three hundred UK label, labels um, uh, and, right. do, and do that very carefully. I'd like I'd like to do more. So. Um, message from oh, somebody's developing this technology what's this <laughs> really 
yeah well, we, know. Should, yes, we should definitely we should definitely talk that's um that would that would be incredible in america so you should definitely talk for those who are here um if i can ask you as well to keep an eye on um donis website there are many things there uh the the daily the daily thing we do is the blog donna 365 uh you always going to discover amazing things and uh, i will really ask you to share it with as many people as possible because uh the big list on Donna's page uh, I've, is growing every day, uh, which is an open database for anybody who would like to search for classical composers, contemporary composers, living composers, female composers. Uh, equally, my dream was to open this list for jazz and pop music one day, but uh I, I can't do it yet without uh, finding proper funding because <laughs> then uh, there are so many only in the classical and contemporary uh, world there's so many that are still not there uh, but if you are a composer and you are not on the list please send an email and i'm writing this right now or if you know a composer who is not on donny's big list of composers uh please um write to them to write to me to send us a, a, a message and so we can include you there um vic uh first of all before you say your last words for now because i'm sure there will be more questions privately after that thank you so much uh for taking the time uh for you taking the time first of all to do all you what that you do to support women in music and I think what you're doing is really amazing and uh, it's kind of changing the scenery uh, in so many ways and as well as some so many other projects out there. It's, it's, it's very and I know that majority of these people are doing uh, things voluntarily first mm -hmm. with any no payment and and I speak from uh, for myself as well because it's so rewarding uh, that uh, is impossible to stop. I know that. But thank you for taking uh, the time to be here and for all the questions you're going to get <laughs> you're going to have to answer. Please follow us everywhere because the social media has a power uh, to reach out to a lot of people and the more people we can reach uh, the better because there will be people there who never heard of a woman composer. I will leave the donated social media addresses here while Vic say our her goodbye. Thank you. Well, thank you very much as as well. It's uh, you know it's been it's been great to 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 speak to another another um, a very passionate ca campaigner. Um, yes, a woman a woman after my own heart. <laughs> so, yeah. I hope I didn't miss anybody. So if we did, please send us uh, private messages and yeah. and we'll be in touch here. Lovely to mm -hmm. see you all from here. Take care, guys. See you soon. Bye, Vic. Thank you again. Bye bye. Bye bye.